So why is it that many cyclists out there struggle to lose weight with cycling as their predominant physical activity? We'll be answering that question in this video and a lot more with expert sports dietitian Steph Cronin, I'll link to her details below, as we get into the 17th edition of the RCA Training Tip Show. Why do cyclists, a lot of cyclists, not really lose much weight when they start cycling? Uh, could be a million and one different things. Um, I'll, I'll rattle off a couple of examples. So um, generally when people start exercising, they get hungry. So okay. typically what you'll find is someone starts exercising, they'll start cycling, um, but they'll actually increase their uh, energy intake as well. Right. So. Um, there's a social aspect of cycling, obviously. So they go out for a long Saturday morning or a Sunday morning ride, stop and have a coffee. With that coffee might Donuts. come a muffin, <laughs> yeah. it might you know be a sausage roll, whatever it might be. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the extra calories that are being burnt cycling, um, you know, it's just human nature to say, well, I've, I've burnt all this energy, therefore I kind of deserve to go and eat. Um, and this happens kind of subconsciously as people aren't actively going out saying, I'm going to eat more because I'm cycling. It just kind of happens. You get hungry, you're in a social aspect, you typically will eat more after that training session. Um, so your energy intake is usually increased when you start doing um, extra training as well. Yes. Um, so that's one side of it. The other side is that... Um, <clears throat> If depending on the intensity, so lower intensity cycling, um, even though you might be going for a number of hours, doesn't actually use a large amount of, of energy. Right. So it can do, but for most people, it's it's not an extra um, couple of thousand kil um, kilojoules or anything like that a day. So all calories a day. Okay. Um, so it isn't lower intensity though the optimal fat burning zone that everyone yes, talks about? Okay. But the key. Um, you know, the key thing to know about weight loss is you need to be in a calorie deficit. Okay. So even though we talk about fat burning zones and, and um, zones of training, which are gonna use more carbohydrates and more fat and things like that, yes. it's totally separate to weight loss. Okay. So we talk, that's what this what your body's being fueled at during that zone. Mm -hmm. However, for overall weight loss, we um, are just looking for a calorie deficit, which will then um, could mean that you're losing muscle mass as well as, um, body fat but okay. to lose weight well you've yes. got to plan it out very very strategically okay. um, so it's important to be in a calorie deficit number one how you get in that calorie deficit depends on um, you know 70% of, of what you're eating okay. so you're, you're 30% exercise so if you're jumping on the bike that's going to be 30% of your, your weight loss journey as such mm -hmm. if you're not looking at nutrition at the same time um, you know you're not even halfway there right so is that a common mistake people make when they start cycling they think that by cycling, they're going to lose weight, and that's only 30% of the pie. 70% is yep. the nutrition. So they're not actually focusing on what they eat off the bike. Know. So should they be calorie counting then? Is that what they should be doing? It's a slippery slope. So okay. um, that can work well. <clears throat> What's important to understand about calorie counting is that there's a million and one different apps out there. Um, they're still an estimation. Okay. Um, so it's still based on averages of food. So, you know, you put in an apple, it's still based on an average calorie of that apple. Okay. Um, so, you know, the data suggests that tracking via calorie apps can be up to 30 to 50% um, out of what you're actually wow. eating. Okay. So that also needs to take into consideration if, if someone's doing it accurately. Mm. So when you're calorie counting, um, for it to be accurate, you've got to include absolutely every single thing that you're eating, um, all the oils that you might cook with, the sauces, um, any other fluids other than water. So um, it does get very, very draining. And I think going down that road, you've got to be very committed, but you've also got to be mindful that it takes out the the, um, the fun side of eating as well absolutely. sometimes. So it is a slippery slope. Um, I don't encourage it all the time. There are certain clients that I'll, I'll specifically ask to do that. And there's other people that I will get to um, basically just keep a record of what they're eating. So a written record, what they've been eating, when they're training, how they're feeling. And if you start writing that on paper and having a look at that each day or each week, that's going to give you a really good idea of what you're doing. You know, when are you over consuming on sugar, when are you over consuming on, on alcohol or, you know, different things like that. Um, I would always encourage someone to, to seek a professional um, and t to seek advice from a professional, particularly a sports dietitian, if they're going to um, be doing a lot of exercise, mm. because at least then they can look through the nitty gritty. Okay. Um, because there's another, you know, they might be eating too little and training too much, yes. and that can actually lead to to the body. Um, 
essentially being resistant to, to body fat changes. Yes. Okay. Interesting. The other side of that is what pe- how people are judging if they're losing weight as well. So if they're relying purely on the scales, it's not a very accurate um, representation of, of body fat as such. Mm. Um, if people are doing cycling, they're doing a lot of resistance um, training with that as well. So if they're doing a lot of hills and things like that, they're probably you know building a little bit of lean muscle at the same time, um, which if they're increasing lean muscle but losing body fat, the scales might be staying exactly the same. Yes. And that's going to be, um, you know, leading to them thinking that they're not losing weight when actually they are losing body fat. It's just not scale weight as such. Okay, interesting. Yep. So what's some steps that people can make? Let's just say they're not prepared to go see an expert yet, but they want to lose some weight. Yep. What are the top three, five things they can do with say protein and carbohydrate yep. intake and all those things? So number one, definitely protein. Okay. Um, so essential for maintaining lean muscle as well because i guess when most people are trying to lose weight they're probably referring to body fat as opposed to weight as such okay um not many people come in saying i need to lose muscle okay um particularly for cyclists who who still want to um keep that sort of power aspect of of cycling so um when you're trying to lose body fat super super important that you're having enough protein throughout the day um, so we've got a protein target, but we also need to look at the type of protein you're eating, um, how it's distributed over the day, how often you're eating as well. So, I can't have the Masashi bar cookie and cream 50 gram protein in one hit. It wouldn't be my first choice. Okay. Um, look, with supplements, again, as I say, protein, most people straight away jump to, I need a, a, a protein supplement, whether it be a bar or um, a powder. Yes. Um, they're convenient, but it's not essential. So okay. ideally, we're trying to still use whole foods because there's going to be other, um, you know, amino acids. Um, there's going to be other um, nutrients and, and minerals that are going to come with those whole foods. Plus, they taste a lot nicer than always relying on a bar or a powder. Okay. Um, those are convenient, so they can definitely be included. It's just, it, you know, that kind of the, the last step that we would look at is using the supplements. Okay. Um, but so yes. as an 80 kilogram rider myself, yep. like how much protein should I have a day? So again, it really depends on, on um, a number of different things. But as a guide, I would say 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Okay. So that's up to 160 grams of protein. And spread sort of evenly yes. throughout the day. Yep. So your okay. body can only absorb so much at once. We know that that number's about 30 grams of protein. Right. Um, depends on the size of the athlete as well. Right. So um, you want to drip feed that really consistently over the day. Um, it's going to help maintain lean muscle, but it's also going to help you feel full over the day as well. Yeah, okay. Yep. And so what about carbs then? So I would say um, the next important thing prior to looking at carbohydrates is making sure that we've got vegetables and okay. salad in there. So that right. would be the second. So first priority is making sure we've got enough protein in the diet. Yep. Second priority is making sure we've got enough fiber from fruit and vegetables um, and salad, predominantly veggies and, and salads. Um, that's going to help with the total health, immune system, all that sort of stuff as well. Um, but it's going to fill you up. So mm. people underestimate how much vegetables and salad do fill you up. If you eat enough protein and, and vegetables, then we add the carbohydrates in. Mm. And the carbohydrates are very strategically planned out. And it's not that carbs are bad. It's not that you have to cut carbs to lose weight or anything like that. It's just that it's the easiest macronutrient that we can target to um, reduce or at least um, be quite strategic how we eat them, when we eat them, the types we eat of um, types of carbohydrates that we eat as well. So Mm. we look at the typical sort of westernized diet. It's very high in refined carbs. So we can definitely get rid of most of those sorts of things when you're trying to lose weight. Yes. Complex carbohydrates, good quality carbohydrates. So we're talking certain vegetables, we're talking fruits, we're talking whole grains, um, legumes, lentils, those sorts of things. Good quality bread, good quality rice, um, good quality pasta even. Those are the sorts of things that can be included, but we're being quite strategic where they are. And what I mean by that is um, if you're a morning trainer, we want to give you most of your carbohydrates in the morning. Mm. Um, And then we would slowly back off those carbs as the day goes on if you're not training in the afternoon. Right. So yep. we're concentrating the carbohydrate intake surrounding the training yep. session. Yep. So okay. carbohydrate periodization, it's called. Yep. So okay. um, wherever your hard sessions are particularly. So if you've got an easy session, we can be a little bit lighter on the carbs. As I said, it's not about eliminating them altogether mm. because it's important to understand that um, you know carbohydrates are still really important for cognitive function, still important for your immune system. Um, and there's still you know loads of different minerals and vitamins that are going to come with those, not to mention they're super tasty and mm. they you know, are still to be included. Okay. And 
What about fats and things like that? So that makes up the rest of it. So okay. very important um, that you still include fats and we're looking at good quality um, unsaturated fats. Not Ma Mickey D's? Not Mickey D's. Oh, okay, so right. the other side of that is that um, those unhealthy type fats basically yeah. will contribute to um, inflammation. So okay. if you've done a really hard session, um, you drive through Mackey D's on the way home, you get a thick shake and a quarter pound a meal with some chips. Oh. It's a lot of saturated fat, a lot of, um, you know, highly refined oils in there mm. what that does is you know your body's already in a state of inflammation after you've trained and you're adding extra inflammation to that by eating those types of fats okay so on the other side of that we you know we really want to encourage eating things like good quality oily fish so salmon mackerel sardines tuna that sort of stuff um you know using nuts and seeds using pesto using avocado using extra virgin olive oil for cooking and things like that um and, and making sure that those sort of fats are included in the diet. Yes, they're going to be higher in calories, but again, it's 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 small amounts throughout the diet. Percentage-wise of the diet, again, it really depends on the individual. There's no you know 10%, 20%, 30% goal for every single person. Um, it really depends on the individual. Okay. But those sort of things, those fats will help reduce inflammation and they're going to help you recover quicker so you can get back to your next training session quicker. So if you implement those three aspects that you talk about, Without calorie counting and without really training the way, changing the way you train, you should be going a long way to you improving should. your body fat composition. Don't get me wrong. You have to be in a calorie deficit. So calorie okay. counting is still important. It's just not essential. So it mm. depends on the individual. If you love numbers, it's definitely something that's... Um, Good to know great education but it's not something that i'd encourage you to do 365 days of the year because it's quite draining mm. but what calorie target you need um, is you know there's a different sort of um, equations out there there's different um, you know blogs and things like that that will tell you to hit these different calorie targets um, and there's no exact number for that we can use equations but we've still got to keep in mind um, how much you're burning throughout a training session as well so um, and how much calories you're using for everyday activities so you know washing the dishes making the bed um, just doing everyday sort of activities it still requires energy mm. um, so we do need to make sure that we're looking after your your metabolic or your resting metabolic rate mm which is the number of calories it takes for you to stay alive at rest okay. to keep your fun bodily functions working. So, you know, your heart pumping well, your brain working well, your liver functioning, etc. Okay. That's the minimum number. That number, you know, often we'll hear about these 1,200 and 1,500 calorie diets. That's generally where most people's resting metabolic rates sit. Okay. So if you're only eating at that, you're not giving yourself the energy to then do your everyday activities and then you're not leading, um, giving yourself the energy to train well as well. Yep. That can have some really long-term serious um, effects. So that could compromise bone density, it could compromise um, heart function, menstrual function for women, um, you know, immune system. So you might be getting sick, you could be getting injuries and those sorts of things as well. So mm. it's not less calories is better. It's just, you know, that's why I would always encourage someone to seek a professional. Mm. Um, if they're not ready to, to see a professional, that's okay. It's worthwhile just, you know, um, being very mindful that less calories is not always better. Okay. Okay.